At the 2019 Commercial Vehicle Show, LDV, now known as Maxus in the UK and Europe, revealed their all-electric small van to the audience, and they called it the EV30. But that's a bit of a standard name, so thankfully say hello to the Maxus E Deliver 3. Now there's a three in the name, and there are actually three exciting things you should know about this vehicle. Number one, it's the first ever small van which is all electric to be designed as an all electric small van. Number two, if you drive it with the right settings, you will get a range of just under 200 miles. And number three, if you go for the top spec van with the largest battery, you will get a payload of 1,000 kilograms. Now I'm gonna let those three things sink in while we give it its very own Vanarama road test. Before we get started, I just wanted to say that I sincerely hope you enjoy this video and if you do, please like it, subscribe to the channel and make sure you click the bell to get notified whenever we post new content just like this. And if you are in the market for a brand new van, car or pickup truck, don't forget to head to vanorama.com and check out the deals. Now, let's start at the front where we always do. Well, I mean, look, first impressions, it's very futuristic. In fact, my wife said it looked a little bit like a 1970s future style milk float. You know, the kind of thing that you'd see in something like Logan's Run, delivering milk to all the lovely people running around just before carousel. But the point is that underneath the bonnet of this vehicle, there's no engine. There's a motor and a battery. In fact, there are two choices of battery, one large and one small. This particular short wheelbase version of the Maxus E Deliver 3 has the larger battery, which means it will get that larger range. And whether you choose the 35 kilowatt hour or 55 kilowatt hour battery, Maxus says you'll be able to charge it to 85% and get back on the road in just 45 minutes using rapid charge. You can also charge it overnight on a slower charge, which will take just over seven hours, but 85% charge in 45 minutes really is compelling. Now, as I said, this vehicle has been designed from the ground up to be an electric van. It does this job. It's not just had an electric motor shoved in, it's been designed to do this. And as such, it's been made from a variety of materials, three particular ones, composites and metals, including aluminium and steel. And that has all been designed to make sure that this vehicle can match speeds, deliver the payload, and also get rid of any anxieties people might have about taking on an electric vehicle as their commercial vehicle. Now, with all that said and done, that's what's under the bonnet. This is how it looks. This is a commercial vehicle, so let's get round to that loading bay and see what it's all about. So while this is an all-electric vehicle, it is an all-electric light commercial vehicle, which means that its loading bay has to be up to snuff. So let's open up these doors. As you can see, they're a 60-40 split, but there aren't any sort of locks on the hinges, so if a big breeze does hit up, it might slam shut. Now, this is a pre-production model, and I have been told that everything you are going to see is what you will get out of production bar a few points, and I'll clarify those as we go through. Anyway, so let's have a look at this loading bay. Well, so far it looks exactly like a loading bay that you'd expect to see in a small van. It's got nice metal lining on the floor and it's got plastic lining on the walls. You might be asking yourself, where are the anchor points for racking? Well, I've been told by Maxus themselves that actually at production there will be very obvious anchorage points. So that's a big bonus. Don't get fooled by all the lining you see in here because there will be very easy access to those anchoring points. Now, this is the short wheelbase version, which means that from here, all the way to the bulkhead is 2.1 meters. You've got a width of 1.6 meters, you've got a height of 1.3 meters, and between the arches, this is one of those areas where this pre-production model is gonna be slightly different from production. Between the arches, you've got a width of just under 1.2 meters with this particular one, but I have been assured by Maxus that at production, they are gonna sort of slim down those wheel arches to just over 1.2 meters. So Euro pallets will be able to slide in, which is a big plus in this particular vehicle's column. Now, payload wise, this is the short wheelbase version. So 855 kilograms is around your payload. But if you go for the long wheelbase version, you will get 1000 kilograms. So, so far so functional. There is a side sliding door. So let's go and take a look at that one. There are some small vans on the marketplace that offer two side sliding doors, but one is the standard, so I'm not gonna quibble with the Maxus on this front. Let's have a go with it. Yep, yeah, opens quite nicely and easily and locks into place. Now, the bulkhead does intrude just a little bit into the aperture, but at its widest, it's 0.7 meters, that's 70 centimeters. 
and height is 1.2 meters. Now, for anyone who's used a small van, this is exactly the kind of side sliding door you'd expect to find. So, we've taken a look at the front. We've taken a look at the loading bay. Let's get into the cabin and see what kind of comfort is on offer there. Okay, so here we are. Well, I mean, I don't know kind of what I was expecting really. I mean, but actually you think about it, it's a light commercial vehicle. It's got to have a nice, tough, durable cabin so that people can be getting in and out. If this is being used by a courier, you're going to have to stop a lot. You want something that's going to be hard wearing and this looks really nice and hard wearing. You've got this kind of gray plastic, this kind of white creamy plastic, and it's a nice two tone effect. You've also got some of this black kind of shiny plastic as well, which kind of makes it feel a little bit more futuristic. I mean, you take a look at the seats as well. Now, hard wearing fabric is one thing, but actually, if this is the standard, you get two very nice kind of comfortable sporty seats. You've got a good driving position. You feel quite nice and supported. It actually feels quite nice and ergonomic. And the armrests as well are very nice. See, at the moment I've got mine stowed away, but we pull it down and it sort of ratchets it up and you can put it into a nice position that's comfortable for you. But so I can show you around, I'm going to stash it back up here. Now, one of the things you're probably going to notice straight away, there's no gear stick. Well, of course, there's no gear stick. It's an electric vehicle, which means you get a lot of foot room down here. In fact, you get a lot of room generally for everything. Your passenger is going to have a lot of space and so are you. Now, let's start with the steering wheel. Flat bottom steering wheel, a little bit weird to see that in a light commercial vehicle, but I really like it. It just adds, again, a nice kind of sporty feel to the inside of the vehicle. You've got two control clusters, you've got your speed limiter and cruise control on the left hand side and on the right, you've got your phone, your volume controls and you've also got voice control. Now pre-production model you don't have voice control activated so we can't show you how that looks but the production model will have that so that you can use it with apps like Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you can access your Google Assistant and so on. Now the dashboard display is actually very nice and clear and again it's quite futuristic. You've got a driver information display on the left and on the right you've got your power usage and you've got your battery charge. Uh, your little screen over here which shows you kind of how full your battery is and, and how you're using it. And in the middle you've got a nice kind of normal hard dial uh, which uh, shows kilometres per hour and miles per hour as well which is great for the um, UK and European markets. If you track along you've got some vents over here, I'll touch on that in a minute because that is a very cool thing that as standard you do actually get aircon. Now the aircon controls are just below this, this big nice infotainment screen and to be fair what do you expect from a vehicle of this kind of futuristic and aspirational level. You want a nice big infotainment screen and you've got it right here. You've got some comfort and convenience settings, you've got phone settings, you've got apps on there. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay will be things that will be available at production, but at the moment they haven't got them. You've also got some hard connections which will allow you to hook your phone up. You've got a USB socket down here, you've got a 12 volt socket here as well. Take a look around storage wise. Well, you've got some cup holders down here next to the handbrake. They're quite nice. There's a little cubby in between them to, to stash some stuff if you want to. The doors have some good storage for bottles, but there's no glove box and there's no kind of overhead storage either. But you do get this nice storage bin over here. It's quite deep. I don't think you're really going to miss the glove box. There's ample places that you could put a sandwich, but I don't know. It could be an oversight. It might not be. Just one or two final things before we crack on with the actual driving part of the review. I just want to say that I think that a bench seat is an option that we will have a bit further down the line, but hey, if this is what we get as standard, I'm happy with that. The final thing, just before we get going, because you're going to see me using it on the drive, well, there's no gear stick, but there is a drive selector switch and you get your reverse, your neutral and your drive down there. And that is what you use to dictate which way the vehicle is going to be going. If I just show you something quick, pretty cool before we go, make sure that the key is turned on. If I flick it into reverse, that screen right there is where the reverse camera shows you what you see. And you can also see that you've got your guide bars. That also will also show you the, the wheel alignment of the vehicle. So you will not only see how far away from something you are, but you'll also see in what directions the wheels are going. All pretty standard, but very useful to have. So there we go. Let's get this thing started up and take it out on a road test. very strange going from driving a diesel to an EV. It's disconcertingly quiet. You get a much more oppressive sense of the road noise, of the road surface you're actually driving on. And every now and then I get interrupted just slightly as I drop into lower speeds 
by an artificial noise of engine. That is for pedestrians, so they know I'm around. Very, very clever. Can you hear it, that whining? <laughs> so weird. So I've sat in the front of a lot of commercial vehicles. I've driven a lot of commercial vehicles. And I've driven some electric cars in my time, but this is the first electric van that I've properly driven. And it's a very, very strange thing. There's, I mean, there's almost an immediate burst of acceleration. When you put your foot down on the accelerator, the powertrain, it just engages and you suddenly find yourself moving forward a lot faster. You're not really, you're not really expecting the engine to take any time. And actually I'm kind of, I don't know what's gonna happen when I go back to driving a conventional car. I'm gonna be completely confused that there's no immediate power at my foot tips, which is, by the way, a thing. Foot tips are a thing. You've got your fingertips and you've got your foot tips. Or toe tips. Toe tips. But here I am, I'm in a 40 zone, pootling along very nice, very effortlessly. It's quite loud in the front here, and that might be because this is a pre-production model and maybe doesn't have all the sound baffling that you'd expect to find in a production model. I mean, if I was gonna say one thing, I do sincerely hope that when these vehicles are produced en masse, that they do have a little bit more sound baffling because I'm having to shout to hear myself talk over the road noise. And especially when you reach higher speeds, the whine of the motor is a lot more apparent. Well, I guess you've got a monotonous engine noise. When you just put your foot down, you sort of just get more engine noise. Whereas with this, it's much more noticeable. The faster you go, the more intrusive the road noise becomes. And the whine of the engine gets louder. So like I say, I think a little bit more sound baffling will sort that out. It doesn't make this any less fun to drive. And I guess this is the point. A lot of questions have been answered, a lot of concerns have been dealt with by a van like the Maxus E-Deliver 3. A lot of people on our YouTube channel were commenting endlessly that range concerns topped their list of things that would stop them from buying or leasing an electric vehicle. But I've got to say, with a 200 mile range and a full battery in an electric vehicle that's as fun to drive as this is, that's those boxes ticked, those questions have been answered. And if your other main concern is the amount of money it will take you to buy one of these vehicles, don't buy it, lease it. Early adoption of EV is as simple as leasing. I'm trying very hard to make sure that I match speed with the speed limit on the roads. It's quite tricky to know and actually remember and almost have a perception of how fast you're going when you're in an electric vehicle. You just assume that because you can't hear noise that you might be going quite slowly, but I've looked down a couple of times and found myself doing 60. It's just one thing to look out for. But of course, you know, remember, it's a light commercial vehicle. You're not meant to be doing over 60 miles an hour. The more you know. Okay, so I've just come down the Vanarama test route and I'm onto that lovely, great big, flat, wide, bit of road that we like to use to open up vehicles like this just to see what they're capable of. Road is clear, let's let it slow down. Okay, we're at 20 miles an hour, let's put the foot down. Ooh! Wowee! Okay, and I'm hitting 60 and maintaining it very easily. There's no guzzle or greediness from the motor. I just keep wanting to say engine. Oh, this is so confusing. But I mean, honestly, this, this feels like the future. Look, at the end of the day, when you're driving a van, you're not supposed to be going over 60 miles an hour. You're supposed to be traveling at the speed limit on the road. And I hear a lot of people saying, oh, but you know, when I want to drive fast, it's going to drain my battery faster. And you go, well, yeah. Absolutely, that's how it works. That's how it works with a petrol or a diesel engine. The more speed and torque and you try to put onto the engine, the more petrol and the more fuel it's gonna use. But the point is that if you're a courier and you're working in the inner city, the chances are you're gonna be going at 30, 40 miles an hour the whole time. You're not gonna need massive bursts of speed. This really is a treat to have the Max C Deliver 3. When we started reviewing vans in a more serious way and we started getting the conventional offering, 
I didn't imagine that we'd be in one of these quite so soon. I mean, obviously the government has commitments, has timelines to meet in terms of when diesel and petrol engines will be phased out for good in favour of electric or other sources. I'm tempted to call this the kind of iPhone, the original iPhone of vans, primarily because it feels like a little bit of a revolution. It feels like the start of something. You know, this is the first van to be designed from the ground up as an electric van. This wasn't car derived. This wasn't, you know, just an existing van that they've shoved an electric motor and a battery in. This vehicle was designed to be an electric van. This is intent. This is the mailed fist. This is the iron gauntlet being thrown down. This is the start. This feels like the tip of the iceberg. And you know, like the tip of an iceberg, this is very cool. So while we're driving along, I think it's best that I list a few things I liked and maybe a few things I don't like so much. Number one, I like how much like a standard LCV cabin this feels. This has to be a work vehicle. I like how understated it is. Number two, I like the flat bottom steering wheel. Very comfortable to drive. Number three, I like the acceleration of the powertrain. I think it's really useful. I think if you're a courier driver trying to get away from a roundabout or traffic lights, you don't have to worry. You're not going to break the speed limits, but you will get better power. You'll be able to get away as soon as they go. <clears throat> Very useful. Number four, I like that the power socket is underneath the Maxus logo at the front. And number five, I just like it. I like that this is an aspirational vehicle, even though it's a van. I like that this is aspiring to be the future. I like that this is aspiring to help us keep our clean air. And I like the look of the future of electric LCVs if this is the first step. And then this is just me quibbling. I don't like that it doesn't have a glove box. There's nowhere to stick your locking wheel nut or your manual apart from a bin in the front down here. And to be fair, you don't really want to stash your stuff like that in just an open compartment. Number two. Now it might be because it's pre-production, but I don't like how loud it is in here. As soon as I start picking up any speed, it gets incredibly noisy. I hope they sort out the baffling. Number three, I don't like that there aren't hinge locks on the back doors that keep them from swinging. It's a windy day today while we've been filming and every time we've had the back door open, someone's had a door shut on them. And that's it. There's not much else that I can really quibble about this vehicle. Maybe I could talk about how some of the white plastic in here might get a bit smudged up. But this is a commercial vehicle. If surfaces didn't get smudged, scuffed and scraped, I'd wonder what the user was doing. There's a lot of pedestrians looking a bit worried when I drive past because this vehicle must be from the outside incredibly quiet compared to all the others. There's a lot of commercial vehicles on the road. But this is the only one that isn't making a sound at the moment. Nothing smooth in an electric vehicle. Braking is very, very, very bitey and very responsive. And then acceleration is almost immediate. I believe acceleration is 0 to 62 miles per hour in about 8.69 seconds, somewhere around there. And I can believe that. To be honest, I believe if you had a slightly more aggressive motor in it, you'd be looking at Tesla type speeds. It certainly feels like it at points. I've got to say, it's very nice and comfortable driving this vehicle. It's got a very comfortable seating point. I just wish that the driver's seat was more adjustable. I wish that it could uh, move back and forward just a little bit. I think if I had a little bit more length, I'd be slightly more comfortable. But I guess that is it's a compromise. You need to have a bigger loading bay, so you have to have the bulkhead just that little bit closer. It's just so very easy to drive this vehicle. It's just like a very quiet automatic van. If you've ever driven an automatic van, you know exactly what to expect. It's just very quiet. So here we are, final leg of the drive back on the Vanarama test route. It's been very nice, it's been very peaceful. 
It's been a little bit of fun. We've had a little bit of speed on the flat track section of our route. And now I'm just about to pull back into Vanarama HQ. So this is the thing. I mean, I understand vans. I understand what I've just driven, but um, I think we need a little bit of an expert touch. Now, during any other normal review, I would tend to do a market roundup, you know, take a look at the other vehicles that this vehicle is facing in the marketplace right now. But while I may know what a good LCV looks like and does, EV, that's not my specialty. So I'm delighted to introduce to you our new head of EV and LCV, Paul Kirby. Paul, hi, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Really good, if a little cold. <laughs> yeah, it is a little bit. Wearing my sleeves up was probably a mistake. Anyway, look, I've just got back from driving the Maxxis E Deliver 3. It's very quiet. And like I said, while I know kind of what makes a good LCV, the EV marketplace is a bit of a mystery. But I think first, like, are you as excited by this vehicle as I am? I tell you, I, I have been waiting for this vehicle to hit the road for quite some time. It is the first, and I'm sure you've mentioned this already, Tom, but it's the first ground up electric vehicle with a good range and a good payload to hit the market. So listen, what's not to be excited about? Absolutely. I mean, the one thing that I was incredibly overwhelmed by was the, the lack of noise. And I think it's the first van I've ever driven that has actually been this quiet. It's been, it was very, very pleasant. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the things that comes across about electric driving full stop is that it's quieter and quietness in, in the sort of the world of being stressed by driving actually taking the noise away actually helps us feel much better behind the wheel. So, I mean, electric driving's got a big tick in the box for me from that point of view. Let's talk about some of the big ticks in the boxes. I mean, obviously range anxiety and payload, key concerns for users of uh, potential users of electric vehicles in the commercial marketplace. Does the eDeliver 3 answer those? It delivers, think? doesn't it? <laughs> it does, <yes. laughs> The e delivers absolutely delivers on those things. We've got a payload of up to a ton on the longer uh, wheelbase version and with a range of over 150 miles, it, it, it's really great. And the good thing about it is we know that the range was measured with 77% payload. So we know that with over 700 kilos in the back, we're still getting 150 miles. Uh, you might need to press eco mode to get that, but it's, it's definitely available and answers those questions. Another thing that I really like about it is that it has, when you say genuinely been designed from the ground up, this was never intended to be anything else, was it? No, it, nowhere else in the world is it sold as a, a, a petrol or a diesel version. It is just an electric vehicle. That is what, in my mind, makes it the landmark. I sort of compare it to the iPhone, the first iPhone revolutionized smartphones. Do you think the eDeliver 3 has got that capability to revolutionize EV marketplace? It's a real punch on the nose of the other manufacturers, if, if truth be told. I think that this will get manufacturers thinking we must get from the ground up electric vehicles into the marketplace, and in particular, the LCV marketplace. So what do you think that does to other people like PSA Group? Well, PSA Group are coming to market with some great products and we'll no doubt get the opportunity to talk about those. But I get it that it's going to challenge them to think differently, hopefully, going forward. And as we see it in the car world, we're going to see it in the van world where we're going to get maybe some slightly different designs, some unusual sorts of things to get used to. But I think it's really going to uh, make a big difference to the other manufacturers as, mu as much as this. So when we're looking at the EV marketplace, I mean, it certainly seems to me that the eDeliver 3 throws a bit of a cat amongst the pigeons. Do you, would you agree with that? I absolutely do. I mean, the, the LCV marketplace is quite limited at the moment in terms of available options. There's a, a couple of vehicles in the small sector. We're just getting a couple of vehicles in the medium sector, and there is only a couple of vehicles in the large sector that you can buy today. We're promised lots by all of the manufacturers and some disruptors not quite getting to the market yet. And it's exciting to see this vehicle actually getting to market and it should drive, um, as you say, the cat into the pigeons and the pigeons will fly up into the air, hopefully, and we'll get some action from the other manufacturers. So what do you see now happening over the next maybe five to 10 years in the EV marketplace on LCV? Well, it, it's an exciting time. We saw about three and a half thousand, just under 3,200 vehicles sold last year that were electric drivetrain, which was just like just about 1% of the market, even just slightly less than that. We were expecting that to triple this year, which was an exciting number, but it was still only going to be about 9,000 vehicles. Don't know really where it'll end up this year. 
But over the coming two or three or four years, we expect to see that double and double and double. And in five to 10 years, we could be looking at 40 to 50% of all the vehicles that are sold in the EV market, in the LCV marketplace, that will be electric, which is great for the environment and for the air quality that we have. It's funny, isn't it? I mean, environmental impact is something that is now coming to the fore more than ever. I mean, look, it's always been a prevalent viewpoint and people have been campaigning for years for a cleaner air. We've just, we're just beginning to emerge maybe from a few months of imposed lockdown because of the coronavirus outbreak. Air cleanness is going up. Electric vehicles surely must be being pushed to the fore now as a way of continuing that happening. Absolutely, Tom. The, the reality is that we're seeing air quality rates that were from many, many years ago. And I don't know about you, but every morning I look out into the sky and where we've had these wonderful sunny days, it's been great. And I don't know if it's just psychological, but the air looks cleaner and it feels and the, it smells better and all of those kind of things. And maybe it is just a panacea or a, a psychological effect. But I really believe that it's setting the benchmark for the future, that we need to get back to these rates. But just by replacing um, the, the, the petrol and the diesel engines that are out there with, um, with electric drivetrain will be a, a major, major difference and reduce the, the CO2s and, the air and improve the air quality measurably. So we've already talked about the E-Deliver 3 potentially throwing a cat amongst the pigeon, but let's also talk about a possible elephant in the room. It's Chinese manufactured. Yeah. Do you think that has any impact on look, feel, quality? Do you know what? I was worried about that myself. I, I, I love the fact that the Chinese have brought this uh, vehicle to the UK. And, and I was uh, privileged to see the vehicle before uh, it got um, upgraded, let's say, for the European market. And I was a little bit worried, I've got to be honest. But now I've got it here in the flesh, it, albeit in a pre-production model, with, the, uh, with the, the, the kit for the European market, I'm less worried about that. And I'm, my feeling is that the UK and European markets will probably accept this vehicle in its, in, for what it is, rather than considering that it is Chinese. Um, it delivers on everything that we need it to. For a van, you've already covered all of that. Uh, and as an electric vehicle, it does the job. I don't think it's going to cause a problem. I think the only people that are going to have a problem are the other manufacturers. So you've obviously joined Vanarama very recently, head of EV and LCV. Do you want to spill the beans a little bit on your plans moving forward, where EV fits into our overall strategy? I'm, I'm really excited to be, to be joining. Um, the combination of LCV and EV is, is just wonderful for me. I, I, I like the, the idea of making these vehicles available to uh, the BBC market, the butcher, baker, candlestick maker, everybody. And, and what I'm experiencing in the big wide world is that uh, a lot of big companies are going in and buying large chunks of these vehicles. And for me, it's about making it available to everybody and helping educate everybody. So. We're going to start by building up a, a, a number of offers, which we're famous for, of course, and, and then start the education process of, of helping people make good decisions about the vehicles that they're buying to affect the air quality, uh, to affect their pockets, because the total cost of ownership is actually surprisingly good on these vehicles, and I'm sure we'll touch on that another time. And they're actually just nicer to drive, as I'm sure you've already experienced. So. With all of these things, if it's right for our customers, it's right for us. And that's what I want us to be able to do. Couldn't have put it better myself. Thanks, Paul. So how do we finish this one? Well, the Maxus E-Deliver 3, in my opinion, is the shape of things to come. I like to think of it in terms of the first iPhone. It was great, people went crazy for it, but it wasn't perfect. I think you could probably say the same thing about this vehicle right here. Payloads at the top spec of 1,000 kilograms, ranges of up to 200 miles. I mean, they answer some of the concerns that people have about electric vehicles, and especially electric vans. The original iPhone started the smartphone revolution. And in my opinion, I'm beginning to feel like this van is gonna start the electric van revolution. Whoa, whoa.